<laughs> I am the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. There are many reasons why a man decides to run. And it can happen in a simple setting or an exciting one, like the city of San Francisco and the busy passenger office of an airline where someone ahead of you in line or at the next window may be living under a dread fear. Like David Leonard, who only a few days ago had been happy with his job, his surroundings, his home, and his wife. Now it's all changed, isn't it, Dave? And you seek only one thing, escape. Can you get me on flight 23 to Los Angeles? Yeah, I believe so. With 23, go for this afternoon. Well, that's right. Your name, sir? Leonard. David Leonard. Hold it for D. Leonard. Mm -hmm. Right. All right, Mr. Leonard. You have that space. Good. How soon before the plane leaves? And we'll be loading in 20 minutes. You'll be on your way by 1.30. All right. How much do I owe you? Doesn't matter, Dave. You're not going anywhere. You can cancel Mr. Leonard's reservation. Let's just say he changed his mind. Right, Dave? Are you staying around to enjoy the holidays, seeing the new year? Maybe give us a chance to talk some more? Yeah. And yeah, just forget the whole thing. As you say, sir. Happy New Year. Thanks. Said you wanted to talk to me. Well, get on with it. Easy, Dave. Easy. Why'd you chase me all across the country? Who sent you? Nobody sends me anywhere. The old bunch don't even know you're alive. Only me. And if it wasn't for an accident, I would go on like everybody else, believing exactly what it says in the New York police records, what the paper said at the time. Let's see, how'd it go? Man leaps to death from River Bridge? Cut it out. You didn't do it at all, did you? Just made it look that way. That note you left, pinned your coat. All a fake. What's wrong with that? Nothing. It isn't like taking a life, just getting rid of one, huh? I couldn't get anywhere as Martin Burke. A man with a record isn't exactly welcome. You served your time. That didn't seem to make any difference. Okay, so you got away with it. Working out all right around here, I understand. Can't you understand? I'm trying to live decently now, and I've managed to for six years. Almost seven, isn't it? Martin Burke will be legally dead on New Year's Eve. Isn't that when you staged uh, the big jump? That's when it was. Look, I don't have to take this. Where are you thinking of going? Police, maybe? Maybe. You could, sure. But I wonder if it would do either of us any good. Oh, they might take me off your neck. The police would be interested in me for many reasons. But Dave, suppose it hit the papers. Your real name came out. The past. What do you want? A little cooperation. But first, let's understand each other. You know, the old gang, they could play pretty rough. Like if they got the idea that you might know too much. Might talk. I only know about my part in this, and I paid for that. Maybe they'd see it different. If they could find Martin Burke, they might want to play it safe. Silence him. Maybe his wife, too. Wife? Sure. You go to the police, Dave. You cut your throat and mine. And your wife's. Afraid it will cost you a lot more than your job. See what I mean? Yeah. Then I think we understand one another. 
Well, I'll keep in touch with you, Dave. Let you know how and when you can help me. Meanwhile, don't try to skip town. I might not like that. See you around, huh? The past has come calling on you, hasn't it, Dave? In the person of Tommy North, threatens to destroy your future. And as you watch him move away, your thoughts leave the small lunchroom and move out across the city. The city you've grown to love. They go to the quiet neighborhood which had so recently met warmth and friendliness. Your neighborhood, Dave. Your home. Your wife. But within these walls, you found more happiness than you've ever known. More comfort and understanding from your wife, Sue, than you'd ever dreamed possible. Little wonder, then, that while you aren't ready to talk to Sue or anybody about your trouble, you find yourself hurrying there to be with her. Well, Dave, you're home at this hour? Hello, Sue. Yeah, I didn't feel well. I had a headache. Dave, are, are you sure there isn't something bothering you? Something on your mind? I had the feeling this morning when you left. Oh, I, I'm just tired. Nothing more, Sue. Just tired. You didn't go to the office this morning, did you? Did you call? Around 10. I was worried about you. You shouldn't have called the office. Where were you, Dave? I had to go out and see a customer. Oh? But I thought this week was inventory, that you didn't have any calls well, it to came make. up unexpectedly. I... What's so wrong about that? Dave, is... Is that all you're going to say? Oh, please, Sue, will you stop? Will you leave me alone? I was out on business. Do you... Do you have to cross-examine me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. I don't know what's wrong with me. Why don't we go out somewhere for a walk or a drive through the park and get our minds off it? Off what, Dave? Sue, will you stop asking me questions? All right, I'm going out alone. I'll be back when you see me, understand? First, fear in the mind of one person then anger, and now confusion in the minds of two. One left at home to worry and to wonder. The other seeking answers somewhere in the city. Answers? Where do you find them, Dave? On a bridge? Yes, David, on a bridge. A bridge something like this one provided the answer before, didn't it, Dave? When a supposed fatal leap gave Martin Burke a new life. Suicide. Only this time, it's Tommy North. Dave? Sue, I thought you'd be asleep. Oh, I couldn't, not with you away. No, don't. Don't put on the lights. I'm sorry the way I acted this afternoon. I've been upset lately. I know, darling. I've been driving and walking around for hours, but everything's clear in my mind now. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be fine now, soon, very soon. Your plans with your wife, hopes for the future. Yes, everything changed three days ago when Tommy North walked back into your life out of the past. Yes, Tommy North is a threat, isn't he? But you think you found the answer, the way out. And even though you don't enjoy the thought of murder, you find it's constantly on your mind of the days that follow as you strive to figure out a plan to talk Tommy into a trap. Hello, Dave. Tommy. 
Look, I said I'd let you know when and how you could help me, remember? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I'm at the Bayside Hotel, room 21. I'll expect you in 10 minutes. Be here. trying to hide it, Dave. They're after me. The police? I'm not afraid of the police. It's the old gang. They think I double-crossed them. Did you? That's beside the point. I've got to get away, Dave, and you're going to help me, see? No, oh, I don't have a lot of money. You have some. I want you to drive me up north somewhere. To Seattle, maybe into Canada. Well, that's impossible. I've got a job. You can get a leave of absence. Tell them you got a sick relative. Tell them anything. At this time of year, they're very busy. I don't know. It's got to be this way, Dave. I'll squeal to the gang about you if you don't. It's my neck. I can't just drop out of sight like you did, but if I was to travel with a man and his wife, I'd be less likely to be traced. Tommy. Yeah. You just said something about dropping out of sight. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I did nearly seven years ago. Made everyone think I jumped off a bridge, committed suicide. So you fooled everybody but me, so what? But you could do the same thing. Just leave a note. Just tell them you were afraid of these guys that were chasing you. Hey, wait a minute. Do you think I... Sure, believe me, Tommy. Look, it worked for me, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Dave, I think you hit it. You saved my life. All I gotta do is just write a suicide note. That's right. That's all you gotta do. Just write a suicide note. He's fallen into your trap, hasn't he, Dave? Yes. And though you're relieved, you're still far from pleased because of what you've decided you must do. Only two thoughts are uppermost in your mind now. One, the means by which you must kill. And two, the reason for which you must kill. Your home and your wife, Sue. And a few hours later, these things are still on your mind. It doesn't seem much like New Year's Eve, does it? Time for celebrating. Dave. Yes? I've been thinking. Why don't we run down to Carmel for a few days? It was good to get away, sort of start the new year off right. Yeah, I suppose so. We could stay at that little inn again, remember? <laughs> that nice old Mr. Franklin. Oh, darling, we did have such a wonderful time there, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Well, shall we? What's that, Sue? Darling, haven't you been listening? I'm sorry, I was... Your mind's a million miles away. I guess so. Oh, Dave, what is it? You never did explain, really, what was bothering you. You said everything was going to be all right. It will. Dave, we've always been able to work out our problems, sort of... Iron things out together, haven't we? Yeah. I suppose I'm going to sound awfully silly, but... Is there someone else? How could you ever think such a thing? There'll never be anyone but you. Oh, darling. But you're right. There is something on my mind. I'm in trouble. Oh, Dave. Dave, you... You haven't done anything, have you? I, I mean... No, no, nothing like that. It's just that... Somebody found out about you? That's right, Sue. I accidentally ran into Tommy North on the street the other day. He found out I changed my name, everything. I see. What's he going to do? He wants money. Well, then give it to him. Give him all we have. Then it'll be finished. It wouldn't stop there. It's not as simple as that. But if we didn't have any more money. He'd probably force me to work on a job with him. Oh, no, Dave. You can't do that. Look, we'll go away. We'll go far away where he'll never find us. Tommy would. And then we'd have to run again. 
I'm not going to run anymore. I started to today. I was going to take a plane and stand for you later. But it's no use. Oh, please, Dave, let's leave tonight, right now. I tell you, it's no use. You know what will happen if we don't, Dave? First, there'll be one job for Tommy, and then another, and then another, and then some night I'll be called down to the morgue to... Sue, please. Dave, you must never go back to that life. Running away, it wouldn't work. It's no good. But what else can we do? What else? Yes. How else can you get rid of this man? There's a way, Sue. I thought it all out. A very simple way. No, Dave. You couldn't do that. You couldn't. No, I guess you're right. I really couldn't kill him. All right, Sue. We'll try it your way. We'll go away. She's right, isn't she, Dave? There is a chance that you can slip away from Tommy North. Start life all over again in some other town. You understand more than ever what the right kind of wife can mean to a man, don't you, Dave? She has you thinking clearly again as she takes the car keys, leaves you to do the packing, while she goes down to the street to drive the car into the basement garage. Strange how few things he can really do with when so much more important things are at stake. Sue! Kids! Hey, Dave! Hello, Brad. We were wondering if you and Sue would like to come upstairs to our place and join our little party. No, thanks. Sue's downstairs getting the car. We're just leaving. Oh, no. Where are you going? Just away. For the weekend. Well, can't it wait a while? Look, Amy's going to be terribly disappointed. Oh, sorry. Her, her folks are here. Drove in all the way from Salt Lake just to be with us to see the new year come in. You never met them, have you? No. Wonderful people. Amy's folks. Her pa's 72, sharp as a tack. You'd like him. Yeah, I'm sure I would. Oh, look, it's just gonna be a little family affair. Now, you know how me and Amy feel about you two kids, just as if you were our own. Yeah, I, I know, but Sue's waiting. It, well, have her come up. No, we, we, we couldn't, Brad. Well, now, uh, look, just for a little while, we can sit around and, and have just a gab fest. Oh, hello, Brad. Oh, hello, Sue. Well, how's my girl? Oh, just fine. I, I've been trying to talk your husband here into coming upstairs. We're having a little family get together for New Year's Eve. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but we haven't time. Time? <laughs> now, what's time, huh? Come on. Oh, now, really, Brad, I'm sorry, but we have to leave right away. We can't stay another minute. Well, now, you wouldn't turn down your upstairs neighbors on New Year's Look, Eve, would we, you? We really have to go. We want to get down to Carmel before midnight. Well... Now, give us a right. rain check on it, will you? Well, all right, if that's the way you kids want it. Well, uh, is there something wrong? Oh, no, Brad, there's nothing wrong. Sure? Positive. Well, okay. Good night, Brad. Good night. Good night, kids. And, and, and Happy New Year! Let's get the car started. I'll put this in the trunk. Hello, Dave. Meeting Mrs. Leonard. Happy New Year. I'm sure you are, Mrs. Leonard. You folks, uh, going someplace? No, we were just running out to pal, huh? No, Tommy, my boss called and wanted me to go up north on business. Sure, on New Year's Eve. Yeah, I called your hotel, but... But uh, I wasn't in, was I? Mm -hmm. So you're taking a little trip, huh? Yeah, just for a few days. And you'll get in touch with me. Yeah, Tommy, as soon as we get back. Give me the keys of the car, Dave. I said, give me the keys. Give them to him, Sue. You two get back upstairs. Get back up there and wait. I'll pick up my stuff at the hotel. I'll stay here tonight. We'll head north first thing in the morning, together. What's your apartment number? 204. 
I'll be back in a half hour. Be sure you're there. I told you it was no use. Look, why don't you leave? Go to a hotel. I'll wait here alone for him and settle it somehow. No, I won't leave you. I don't want you to get mixed up in this. I want you to forget it. Forget me. I won't, Dave. I can't leave you. Oh, please, darling, we can talk this over together. Decide what to do before he comes back. Please, darling. There's nothing we can do. Oh, yes, there is. We can go to the police, have Tommy North arrested. Let your past come out. Oh, Dave, perhaps it's the only right way out of this. Perhaps. If I go to the police, Tommy will tell the gang I'm still alive. Tell them where I am. Maybe not. Are there many of them left? A couple. I don't know if they think I know too much or... or figure I told you too much. Do you realize what would happen? Yes. But I'd prefer to take that chance than risk losing everything we've built together. You're wonderful. No. I just believe in you. Oh, Dave, will you do it? Go with me to the police? Tell them everything? I don't know yet, Sue. I just don't know. indecision and all around them a city in celebration happiness Sergeant? Yes? My name is Leonard. Dave Leonard. Well, that is, it has been since I arrived in San Francisco. Leonard. Leonard. Oh, yes, David Leonard. I have the report right here. A stolen car. Well, I hope you had it insured, Mr. Leonard. It's pretty badly smashed up, I'm afraid. Sorry, I don't understand. Well, there was quite a gun battle over in the Mission District. A couple of strong-armed guys tried to get a man named North. He'd stolen your car prior to the shooting. He wrecked it. He died over at emergency. You mean uh, this man, North, he's dead? Yes. So is your husband's car, lady. Oh, it's a fine New Year's present for the pair of you. Oh, that's all right. We don't mind. No. Funny thing about those two guys who tried to get north. They didn't know he was going to do away with himself anyhow. They'd have saved themselves a murder rap if they had. Do away with himself? You, you mean suicide? Yes, we found a note in his pocket. He figured on jumping off the bridge. He named those two hoods as the reason. Uh, we'll have no trouble rounding them up, though. The name and everything else is right here in Tommy North's last message. Oh, Dave. Dave, do you hear? Yes, New Year's. Another New Year. And may it be a happy one for you, Mr. Leonard. Thanks. Darling, and we're through with the old forever, aren't we? Now we can get on with the new. Happy New Year to you, Sergeant. Happy New Year to the both of you. 